Welcome to the Wealth Genius Podcast. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Strategies for multifamily real estate investing, mindset, community, success. The Wealth Genius Podcast with your host, the godfather of real estate, Alfonso Quadra, who has expansive experience in business and massive success as a real estate investor. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Let's dive into today's episode. Wow. Look at us. We're here. We are here. Hello, hello. <laughs> good happy to, ha- to be here. Yeah, yeah, good to have you here. The Godfather is also happy. <laughs> the little Godfather. So <laughs> it could somebody could say they look a little bit like you, but uh, <laughs> you know, the chin strap, you know? <laughs> I can't do this here. You know, I can't do this. So I, I got some beer envy. <laughs> but the thought of having this podcast came about, and you know, we talked with you know all the people that are going to be involved, and I'm like, okay, who would be my ideal? We're shooting this season. It's, you know, 11 or 12 people that I want to interview. And it could be just one season. You know, we don't know where it's going to go. And so I said, okay, if I was going to do this, who would be my people? You know, and you guys were at the top of that list. You know, as you know, I care so much about you and I'm your biggest fan. I'm your biggest cheerleader, you know. So I want to have that conversation because I know that you guys could inspire people to take action, get into real estate, especially from your backgrounds. I mean, you guys left jobs. You know, that takes a lot of guts. Not anybody could just do that, right? And so, you know, this has been a big, long journey for you guys, and I want to dive a little deeper on that journey. But we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. I want to talk a little bit about pivoting mm-hmm. because... You're on this journey, you're investing in real estate, you leave your jobs, right? And you have like this vision of what you want to do. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. We had it figured out for about a month or so. Yeah, (laughs) and then uh, interest rates, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone got the slap of the interest rates. And so, you know, some people, you know, were crushed. A lot of people took L's, but you guys pivoted, right? And you just changed the strategy right change the strategy to make it into a win but even a bigger win than you would have had if you would have continued with the old strategy so let's start there i don't know like maybe let's start with dakota sharing a little bit about that story yeah so before we were in this multifamily space we were doing a lot of flipping so that was great when the market was hot you know houses were selling super easily they were going over market Life was great. We were like, we're going to make a ton of money off of all these flips. And I think being having not gone through a market shift yet in our investing careers, we didn't really know when to stop acquiring new flips. So we got a couple that were a little bit later in the hot season, maybe mm-hmm. we'll call it, <laughs> and did the flips. And by the time they were done, unfortunately, the market had shifted. So interest rates are going up, people are scared to buy. Nobody's buying Nobody, Yeah, nobody's buying, buyers are terrified, the market's going down. We actually listed one of the properties, I think right as the first interest rate hike happened. Mm -hmm. And as we had it listed, we were trying to drop the price and the interest rate would go up. So you're doing this. (laughs) This is the interest rate. Yeah. Yeah. The timing for every single price drop there was an interest rate change right after. Yeah. And if only if you would have price dropped before that interest rate, you know, if you would have started Mm -hmm. where you ended up, you probably would have sold these properties. Yeah, we would have been fine. And we just, we couldn't catch the interest rates It's like trying to catch a falling knife. Yeah. So we were in a private mortgage. We were paying out of pocket for this mortgage, right? Because they're supposed to be flips. There's no income coming in. They're just sitting there vacant. And we're just bleeding money. So every there's, single month there's two specifically two single family homes that we had mm-hmm. flipped renovations complete and together it was ten thousand dollars a month in wow. interest payments yeah wow. and remember we don't have a job <laughs> <laughs> shit is going down okay mm-hmm. for the lack of better words like how much stress does that put on your relationship a lot it, it yeah. does <laughs> a lot there was such a grind though that it almost didn't even feel that much pressure on the relationship Mm -hmm. but stress levels so you guys you guys were able to come like i I guess communicate because i I don't think a lot of people could do that we were in it together and we knew we were in it together it's not like 
one person made a, a mistake and there's mm. resentment it's, yeah we're both in this together i love that and so this is happening what are you feeling like what's the feeling like stress was high we saw the bank account going down and we were like we need to fix this we didn't know what the fix was mm -hmm. because we didn't want we didn't want to do a long-term rental and then the market you know comes back up or the interest rates go down and now we're stuck with this long-term tenant because that wasn't going to be the plan it also wasn't going to cover our private mortgage we and to sell a tenanted property is not the same as selling a brand newly renovated top to bottom property yeah so we just we were going through all these options do we furnish it do we try to do short-term rental but in ottawa you can't do short-term rental so do we try to like macgyver away that we can do short-term rental with them so we're going through all these options to try to figure this out but we were scrambling like there was nothing that was coming out that was clear i like, feel like we were just, spinning our tires right we were yeah. going in circles mm -hmm. just yeah. to, like, which most I think people i think it's it's fair because times. most people would people are trying to survive yeah yeah people are going to do whatever they have to do to survive yeah. yeah we knew that we wanted to get through it we knew that this was something that we had to do because we knew this wasn't going to be the last properties we had we knew that this wasn't going to take us out we weren't going to let ourselves fail yeah and that's yeah. actually that was what we told ourselves when we left our jobs we at the beginning of that year we we're in it to win it yeah yes. we are mm -hmm. not gonna we're gonna take this leap of faith we're not gonna let ourselves fail and suddenly like months later we're in this situation that we're like oh man we could fail <laughs> like we could fail right now but yeah we were in it together we knew that this we wanted to do real estate that we had to figure it out because this was not going to be what what took us out so thankfully through a lot of discussions with you and trying to brainstorm on how to make this work you know we finally came up with a solution but it took a really long time and we tried different strategies we we're talking like five months yeah we tried mm -hmm. to do a rent to own with it we actually did furnish one of them which is a whole other story but we furnished it in 48 hours with two thousand wow. dollars it's a three <laughs> bed two bath full house we furnished the whole thing in 24 hours with two thousand dollars and what was the objective like just by your time by time by time so the idea Short -term was rental or medium term rental it, yeah, yeah it was to do a medium term rental just to create something like some kind of income to at least patch the bleed mm -hmm. so we could figure out how to do this and not just stress about bleeding. yeah and you're not the only one that went through that right mm -hmm. there's there's people that got completely wiped out during that time yeah. right and you guys just held on strong enough to even see the solution see the other side yeah. you know so that's incredible so well it definitely helped having you in our corner yeah. That, yeah that really helped and i think actually one of the smartest things that we did and as we tell the story i'm kind of realizing it was to reach out to you just before all of this happened like obviously yeah. that wasn't the intention but it was good times yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it was uh, everything was life was good yeah. you know yeah. i remember we started a coaching program. We were, you know, obviously the objective was to buy multifamily, but then we had to, you know, we obviously had to pivot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that ended up being the main focus. And yeah. that's important, right? Because we had this discussion a lot, but you can't grow when you're stuck in this spot of like confusion and survival. Yeah. And you're just like, you're gripping with like your fingertips yeah. just to hang on. You can't grow out of that because yeah. you're stuck. Your brain is full of this fear basically of what's going to happen if we don't figure this out so it probably took longer than we wanted it to but it was so important yeah. to get to yeah. where we are now where we are able to grow let's talk about the strategy you know a flip to joint venture what you've done is like you've restructured the deal so you're going to add more units right so you brought on a partner that can help you with the qualifying power yep. and then it's going to be a home run yeah. right yeah. and so for people that are wondering like how does this kind of work people that are looking for like maybe ideas or options to you know fix a situation or how to make it a home run so kind of go through that process yeah i think the biggest thing like if you're watching this and you're like why didn't you just refinance the property and get out of your <laughs> private mortgage that Remember, makes the most sense you don't have jobs yeah we <laughs> didn't have t4s right so we couldn't just walk into this property and ref that would have been a great solution, but we, we couldn't go to the bank and say, hey, can I get a mortgage? Can you give me this great interest rate? And you know, we'll rent it out and we'll be fine. Yeah. Cause the idea was not to keep it. That's right. That wasn't the original idea. It was the idea was to flip it. So yeah, we had to, and our flips were there. like, the longest flip I think was probably four months or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you're not holding on to the private mortgage for that long. Yeah. And so it, it actually makes sense to pay that amount of interest to have the ease of, of 
financing. Yeah, so now we're trying to restructure this. We can't get that mortgage. So the idea is now bring on somebody who can. So someone who does have a strong T4. I always say someone that the bank is going to love. So we decided to bring someone on that could qualify for that mortgage, which is where the flip to JV comes in. We basically sold him the properties mm -hmm. in like in an unofficial official way, sold him the properties, but through a joint venture maintained ownership, yeah. like majority ownership of the property. So gave him some equity and then we were able to maintain ownership. So you reduce the interest, which now the deal yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And now you're gonna go and improve the asset mm -hmm. where now it's gonna be a cash flowing asset. Yeah, exactly. because now we're adding we're adding units to the property as well. Yeah. So there's, there's gonna be two tenants under each yeah. roof. Yeah, and, and thankfully that's actually how we started in real estate, was adding units to single family homes. Mm -hmm. so yeah, this so we was, just went back to our roots. Yeah, <laughs> this was serious, but it was something yeah. that we were comfortable with. Yeah. So now suddenly, we're in this super uncomfortable, well, we were in this super uncomfortable situation, bleeding money, very stressed. We bring on this partner and some, suddenly we're doing something that we're super comfortable with that we can do no problem. Yeah, so, and we're no longer bleeding. Yeah, yeah. so we got some other financial partners who came on as equity partners, no more private mortgages or mm. private lending <laughs> on these properties. So brought on some equity partners for it and we're actually in the middle of doing the renovations now, called in the old reno team that were like, hey, you thought we left. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and do some SDUs for us. And yeah, now we're doing something that we know well, we're comfortable with, and it's gonna be a great project for us, a great project for all the partners involved. Mm -hmm. Actually, my mom is one of the investors mm -hmm. and she gets to own equity in a property. Beautiful, so, beautiful. Yeah, so it's, it's a win, 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 win. It totally yes. is. I love that. Yeah. And so now, I mean, the transition now that you, you know, like you can breathe, you know, six million dollar property, 24 units, looking at, you know, multiple millions of dollars in real estate, you know, I mean, you guys are like true investors, like building your portfolio. And so let's fast forward you guys leave your jobs <laughs> like real estate as an idea is one thing but you know did you submit resignation letters and what was that like did you do it together nope dakota did it so okay it was weird, weird. <laughs> we have to back up i think a little bit a little bit for this by so, the way none of this started with wanting to be entrepreneurs mm -hmm. right yeah. this was let's buy some properties so that we can kind of supplement su more than supplement and, and have kind of a retirement plan with that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was supposed so. to be just a side gig. Mm -hmm. And then the side gig got very, very busy because we had four projects, four flips happening at the same time while we were also in our full time jobs. Yeah. And because we thought we were going to be ultimate flippers and make a bunch of money off of that. Which HGTV. We yeah, yeah, we now know that didn't quite happen. Actually, a, a, a company did reach out to us. Okay. To yeah. do something like that, that. I see that. I see yeah. that. I see you guys as a show. Yeah. You know? Maybe one day. We'll see. <laughs> but it got really busy. And we were like, you know what? If we're going to do this this seriously, we need to be able to invest the right amount of time into it. Yeah, one of us needs to leave our jobs. One of us needs to leave our jobs. And it went back and forth a lot. There was <clears throat> the Jeff will leave first, and then I'll go on maternity leave in like a year, two years, and then just never go back. Maternity so, leave, so you guys were really like... We were four years into our relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah we yeah. were engaged. So yeah, we yeah. were, this was like also planning so, a wedding. So yeah, you like had a whole this. plan like laid out here. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. So you look like planners. <laughs> a little bit. It went back and forth, like he'll leave first, I'll leave first. I was in healthcare in COVID. That was really tough. And Jeff could see what it was doing to me from a mental health perspective. So he was like, you know what? You need to get out of the hospital. You need to get out of healthcare. Why don't you leave first? So we finalized it. I put in my two weeks notice. It felt so <laughs> good. This was uh, in December? It was in December. And I did it in a way that they wouldn't give me one of my days off for my holidays. So I did it in a way that my last day was the day before they wouldn't give me off. That was <laughs> <laughs> That's not spiteful at all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I put in my two weeks. It felt really good. So now I'm out of my job. Jeff is still in his job. Then I was watching you. Were you, were you a little jelly? Yes, Jeff was of course. a little jelly. <laughs> of course, of course. But I was also watching and Dakota was still very busy. And I wanted to help, but I was stuck in my office doing meetings and stuff that I didn't care about, right? As time went on, I started to resent my job more and more because 
I was trying to build something and that was getting in the way at this point. Mm -hmm. So I think I lasted a month. Yeah. <laughs> the plan was one year, right? The, the plan, plan was, was a year. One year and then I was going to leave. So yeah. you write these letters. The timing was right. The second you press send, what are you feeling? It was mixed. I The whole time, the whole process, I was like, I need to get out of here. I don't want to be in this position anymore. And then when it actually came to sending the letter, it was really hard because medicine was was a job, but it was also supposed to be my career, right? Like medicine was something that I specifically went to school for, I specifically graduated for, and in the end, I like I still loved the medicine component of it. There were just other pieces of it that obviously didn't work out very well. So it was hard because I was like, this was like six years of my life that I put into being in this job, in this career. So actually submitting it was really tough. But once I did, I think I still had some mixed emotions because I was like, you know, should I have just gone to like, maybe I'll just go to a, another job, another mm. medical job. Maybe like this one wasn't right. So I was still having these like back and forth, like, am I really gonna give up six years of this, of like training for this, and then six years of working in this career I got over it pretty quickly. <laughs> and then I was really excited yeah. once the back and forth went, yeah, yeah. Um, left my head. So same question for you. You're about to press send. So I think when I pressed send, I was excited. Pure excitement because I analyzed things. So mm -hmm. I'd already done all that kind of <laughs> self-talk beforehand. Yeah. So I, I knew that that was kind of what I wanted to do. We also had four flips on the go. Right. Yeah. So we saw the potential in what was that was going to bring. Yeah. And so we thought, OK, I have our RSPs from my time in my career. I'd also been like laid off from IT jobs. So I it wasn't like my first big job out of yeah. school. So I had been through multiple through, yeah. through multiple companies. So it wasn't like that big of a deal, I guess, to leave one job and then maybe just go find another one if yeah. I absolutely had to. But I knew that I had our RSPs. So it was like, okay, it was a relief that now you could do these, we work on these projects, exactly. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I feel that's so inspiring. I know that who was ever watching this and they're holding on to their job or whatever. By the way, we're not telling people to leave their jobs, <laughs> but if it's something you need to do, this, it's, this is what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, you know, want to congratulate you guys for, you know, making that decision early versus holding on to something. And maybe when all of this would have been happening, maybe you wouldn't have fought as much you wouldn't have you, you wouldn't have rose up to the occasion you know mm -hmm. so what are tips so the first one is going to tie into my second one so the first one is to remove the ceiling that you've probably created for yourself I think a lot of people think that they can't do things and it's all in here so if you're able to remove that ceiling and think of what the potential is and what the potential that you could live up to could be, it's a really incredible feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think so many people are living with this artificial ceiling that they've created for themselves. Yeah. And to go along with that, so like how do you get rid of it, which is not the easiest thing, uh, I'd say to get into the right rooms. So make sure that you, you know, people always say, don't be the smartest person in the room. If you're the smartest person, you're in the wrong room. Get out of that room. Get into a room that you're surrounded by people doing bigger things than you are because then you're gonna be able to step into that space. So you're gonna be able to step out of that ceiling. And then the other thing is build your resiliency <laughs> because there is not for the faint of heart. No, it is not. <laughs> no. So like it's gonna kick you down, it's gonna be hard. So figure out what's gonna make you resilient. What's going to get you to push through those like really hard times? Because there will be. I don't care what HGTV looks like. I don't care what social media Flips looks like. Flips don't happen in 30 minutes. They don't. <laughs> it's hard. It is yeah. hard work and things suck sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to figure out what's going to make you resilient and what is it that's going to push you through those hard times. So yeah. I think that's those are the... I love that. It's, it's important. Jeff. I think changing your circle or not necessarily changing it upgrading it but you want to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with the right people yes people that are inspiring you yes and not just trying to 
keep you down, you always talk about the crab bucket, mm-hmm. right? You don't want to be hanging around with the crabs or the, the pigeons. <laughs> the naysayers. <laughs> the naysayers, yeah. 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 So quickly, quotes, phrases, proverbs that have inspired you. <laughs> we'll start with Dakota. So I don't know if you know this. But I use this a lot in if I do talks, if I do presentations, and it's something that you said at a boot camp. You say versions of it often, but it, I think it was probably a year ago actually this time, and you said, want more to give more. Mm. And that has stuck with me ever since you said it at I think a boot camp about a year ago. And I use I have a slide actually that moves into <laughs> a bunch of my different presentations. It doesn't matter what the presentation is about, it is my last <laughs> slide. And I just, I thought that was so beautiful coming from, coming from a place of like a career of service, Mm -hmm. right? And trying to figure out how I can still be of service in the world of real estate. Because everyone looks at real estate investors and they're like, you know, they're out there to make money. They're out there to like, you know, fill their pockets. And I thought that was such a cool thing that you said was, if you're somebody who is scared of wanting more, you're probably the person that should have more. Yes. Because if you want more for other people and therefore are holding back what you want, if you are the person that's going to have more, you are going to spread that. You're so be able to give more. If, yeah, if anything, those people that are trying to hold themselves back because they don't want to take up too much space, they should take up that space because then they are going to give that to other people. And I just thought that was such a beautiful thing and such a great way to look at entrepreneurship and like in our case real estate investing and it gave me a a space to want more and to be able to be from a position of service within the real estate world so love it yeah jeff mine's gonna be a lot shorter (laughs) (laughs) normally (laughs) (laughs) you you can tell who likes to talk (laughs) (laughs) you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with i love it yeah i love it and it's true i always tell people take inventory of the people that are around you because people's lives are a direct reflection of the expectations of their peer groups. Mm-hmm. Change your peer groups, change your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Yeah. You guys are amazing. I know you're going to inspire a lot of people. How can people reach out to you? I think social media, Facebook. Yeah. We're on Instagram. Yeah. We have a website. All the stuff will be underneath. Yeah. Yeah. And I always say, like, it's great to, like, reach out on Facebook and Instagram, but book a Zoom call with us. Yeah, yeah, or like yeah. if you're... Our calendar's on our website. Yeah, like we're pretty accessible. So like get on yeah. Zoom, even if you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what we'll talk about. I don't know what value we can add. Mm-hmm. Like just let's have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. we're always I love looking that. to connect with new people. Yeah. Alfonso loves you. Alfonso loves you. And we'll see you all at the top. Woo! Thanks for listening to the Wealth Genius Podcast. If you have a question or comment about something you heard today, reach out to The Godfather via social media or email him anytime. All that information is in the show notes. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Wealth Genius Podcast. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Until next time, see you at the top.